In this video, I am going to demonstrate the major nerves which are supplying the upper limb, also their cores, um, the muscles they are supplying and if there is injury to these nerves, uh, what type of deformity we see. I am going to look at the course of the brachial plexus, the axillary artery, on the lateral aspect is the lateral cord. The lateral cord gives three branches. The lateral pectoral nerve which is missing here supplies the pec major and pec minor, contribution to the median nerve and the musculocutaneous nerve. It's a mixed nerve containing the motor fibers and the sensory fibers. Pierces the crocobrachialis muscle and supplies the crocobrachialis. Then it passes between the biceps and brachialis, supplying these two muscles. And on the lateral border of the biceps, in its lower end, it pierces a superficial fascia and becomes lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. We can only see small part of it. This nerve then supplies the skin over the lateral surface of the forearm. Injury to the musculocutaneous at this point will cause the weakness of the shoulder flexion, weakness to the elbow flexion and loss of the sensation over the lateral surface of the forearm. Median nerve is a nerve of the flexus of the forearm and thumb. Median nerve is formed in the axilla by the contribution from the lateral cord and the contribution from the median cord. The nerve passes through the arm without giving any branches and pierces the pronator teres. It supplies all the muscles in the flexor compartment of the forearm except flexor carpi ulnaris and half of the profundus. The nerve can be seen again in the lower part of the forearm between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. The nerve then passes in the hand through the carpal tunnel. This is a space which is created by the carpals and the flexor retinaculum. It's an tight area which gives passage to all the flexor tendons of the digits which is flexor digitorum superficialis as well as flexor digitorum profundus. The nerve comes and gives sensory branches to supply the skin over the hand which I am going to show you on the other prosection. So these are the sensory branches and also it gives a branch to the thenar muscles. Let me catch the recurrent branch of the median nerve. Now my probe is showing the recurrent branch which supplies the three thenar muscles which is your flexor, abductor and underneath is the opponents. It also supplies the two radial lumbricals. These are called as 
lymph muscles, lumbricals, abductor, opponents and flexor. Injury to the median nerve which is commonly happens in the carpal tunnel syndrome. The flexor and abductor are supported by other long flexors, but the paralysis of the opponents will cause weakness in opponents of the thumb and that means patient will have a very weak pinching movement. This is the test which is done for the median nerve asking patient to oppose to the fingers and feel the grip of the pinching which is weakened or gone in the case of the median nerve injury. The sensory innovation of the median nerve I have shown here by drawing by the black pen. The median nerve supplies the palm just below the three and a half fingers, this area. It also does the palmar surface of the thumb, the palmar surface of the three and a half finger, half of the ring finger and on the dorsal aspect of the hand, it supplies the sensory innervation up to the DIP joint or the PIP joint. Again three and a half of the ring finger. A damage to the median nerve causes paresthesia or loss of sensation over the area of the palm and the area of the three and a half fingers on the palmar side as well as up to the PIP and DIP joints over the area which is I am pointing right now. To test the median nerve, a prick on the side of the index finger is done because it is the safe area where there is no superimposition of any other nerves. The sensory innervation of the ulnar nerve is shown here in the red marking. It supplies one and a half finger on the ulnar side and the palm below it on the dorsal aspect it does again one and a half finger and the dorsum of the hand below it. The ulnar nerve is tested on the border of the little finger because there is no superimposition of any other nerve. Injury to the ulnar nerve will cause loss of sensation in this red area. Sensory innervation of the radial nerve is drawn here with the yellow color. It supplies the dorsum of the hand as well as three and a half fingers up to the DIP joints or the PIP joints. It also does a small area of the palm just below the thumb. Testing of that radial nerve is done in the area shown here by the probe. Entrapment or the injury to the radial nerve gives the loss of sensation in this yellow area. Ulnar nerve is a very important nerve for the movement fine movement of the hands, especially for the people who are working on the computers, working with the instruments. This nerve is essential. It supplies all the fine muscles in the hand. The ulnar nerve comes from the medial cord. The medial cord is lying on the medial side of the axillary artery. It gives five branches, the medial pectoral nerve which is not here the medial cutaneous nerve of arm which supplies the skin over the arm, the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm which is going to supply the skin on the medial side of the forearm, 
medial contribution to the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve passes through the arm without giving any branches and comes on the posterior aspect of the medial apicondyle. This is an important site where it can get crushed with the fracture of the medial apicondyle. We can trace back again in the forearm under the flexor carpi ulnaris. The nerve is running with the ulnar artery. Here is the ulnar artery and the nerve supplies one and a half muscles in the flexor compartment of the forearm. Flexor carpi ulnaris and half of the profundus. So this half of the profundus. The ulnar nerve then enters with the artery into the hand through the Guyan's tunnel. That's another entrapment site. And it then it supplies all the muscles in the hand except the thenar or the loaf muscles, the five muscles which we talked with the median nerve. It supplies the hypothenar muscles, two lumbricals on the ulna side, and all the seven introsii and the last the adductor pollicis. Injury to the ulnar nerve causes a claw hand deformity. The hand is clawed and there is sensory loss over the one and a half finger and the palmer side of the one and a half finger as well as on the one and a half finger of the do dorsal side and the fingers in this area. Let me demonstrate the course of the radial nerve, the muscles supplied by the nerve by it and the sensory innervation. I will also talk, like to talk about the deformity which is produced by the injury to this nerve. To see the origin of the radial nerve, we orientate ourselves at the brachial plexus in axilla, medial cord, lateral cord axillary artery. Hidden behind the axillary artery is the posterior cord. The posterior cord gives five branches, three minor branches. The one branch we can see is the thoracodorsal nerve supplying the latissimus dorsi muscle. The upper and the lower scapular nerves are not present in this prosection, they supply the subscapularis muscle and the teres major muscle. The two major nerves which are coming out from the posterior cord is the axillary nerve. I have to remove the radial nerve to see, show you the axillary nerve which is going on the posterior aspect of the axilla and the radial nerve coming down to go into the spiral groove. The nerve enters the forearm. Here we can see the nerve positioned between the brachioradialis muscle and extensor carpi radialis longus. It pierces the supinator muscle and passes to the posterior compartment of the forearm. 
Here this nerve is called as posterior interosseous nerve. The nerve supplies all the extensions of the wrist abductor of the thumb, extensors of the thumb, extensors of the digits. It also supplies the skin over the posterior aspect of the forearm. Injury to this nerve gives a condition which is called as wrist drop because many of the extensors of, of the wrist are supplied by this nerve and with paralysis of these nerve produces a condition which where the hand goes down into very flex position and that is called as wrist drop. Let me show you the course, the distribution of the axillary nerve and also the injury, what type of weakness it is going to produce. To trace the course of the axillary nerve, we orientate ourselves in the axilla with the brachial plexus, medial cord of the brachial plexus, lateral cord of the brachial plexus. Here is the axillary artery, hidden behind on the posterior aspect is the posterior cord. The axillary nerve arises from the posterior cord and passes on the posterior aspect around the surgical neck of the humerus. We cannot show you the course around the surgical neck, but this is how it is sort of coming on the posterior aspect and winds around the surgical neck with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. In this area, the nerve gets entrapped by the fracture of the surgical neck. It supplies two muscles in the arm and this is your deltoid muscle and one of the lateral rotator of the shoulder is the teres minor. Apart from supplying the this major muscle, it also supplies a small area of the skin over this area which I am pointing by the probe. This area is called as vaccination area. Deltoid muscle is a strong abductor and initiation of the abduction is done by supraspinatus muscle, but most of the range of the movement of the abduction is done by the deltoid muscle injury will cause a condition where patient is not able to do the abduction as well as a little bit of loss on the vaccination area of the skin. The blood supply of the upper limb comes from the subclavian artery. The subclavian artery leaves the neck region through the interscalene triangle scalene is anterior, scalene is medius and the first rib. The lower border of the first rib, the artery changes its name. It is called as axillary artery. The axillary artery at the lower border of the teres major muscle again changes its name and now it is called as brachial artery. The brachial artery travels to the forearm and divides into two major branches. On the radial side is the radial artery and on the ulna side it is the ulna artery. If we follow the radial artery, the radial artery passes underneath the brachioradialis muscle and becomes subcutaneous in the lower part of the radius. This is the area we feel the pulsation of the radial artery. The ulna artery passes underneath the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle with the ulna nerve and it passes into the hand. 
here we can see the continuation of the ulnar artery which forms or contributes the formation of the superficial palmar arch. The arch is completed by the superficial branch of the radial artery. The arch gives common digital branches. We can see these branches coming out, five branches coming out from the superficial arch supplying the superficial part of the hand. These common digital branches when they reach the MP joint divides into proper digital branches supplying the adjacent part of the fingers. One of the very interesting point I want to explain. Let us look at the relationship of the common digital branches with the common digital nerves. The nerves are lying deeper than the arteries. Here are the arteries lying. They are lying more superficial and the nerves are lying more deeper. When they reach to the digits, we can see the nerves are becoming more superficial and the arteries are lying more deeper. This explains why the paper cuts do not bleed, they sting. Another important fact, the tip of the fingers get maximum number of sensory nerve innervation and this is the reason why we use the pulp of the fingers or the points of the fingers to feel anything.